Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to have you today. We are going to have Pear Deck here today and some exciting stuff. I'm joined with the amazing Chris, who also works for Pear Deck. Um, I am Amber Trout, and I am the GEG Colorado, well, going to have that announcement later, but I'm no longer the leader, but I'm going to be helping out with GEG Colorado in the background, so we'll talk about that. But it's an exciting time for GEG Colorado as we're going to get started with new people and new things happening. But today we are going to be learning about Pear Deck and distance learning. So Chris, if you want to join us on screen, um, Chris is here today and he's going to help us out with uh, getting started with the Pear Deck and distance learning. Yeah, I have mine on today too, woo! And so, um, Pear Deck is an amazing feature to not only use in your classroom, but also to use in distance learning as well. And so we have seen a huge rise in Pear Deck because it's just a great tool inside and outside of the classroom. So Chris, you can take it away. Okay, awesome. Just gonna exit out of full screen mode here really quickly. There we go. Okay, so as Amber mentioned, um, my name is Chris. I am the regional partnership manager for Pear Deck in the states of Colorado, Arizona, and Utah right now here in the United States. Uh, we've seen some huge demand over the last month, so I'm also uh, helping folks out in Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, and Nebraska as well. So if you're coming from there, you may see my name thrown around. Uh, but uh, just in case you want to reach out to me post-session for any questions that you might have, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. Here's my contact information. It's Chris Period Sorrell at Paradeck.com. If you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, feel free. If you like funny gifts or retweets about Pear Deck, that's the, basically the extent of the content you're going to receive from me. Uh, but feel free to engage with me there as well. Uh, today, we are going to do a few things. So uh, some of you have probably used Pear Deck before, but for those of you who might be Pear Deck newbies, uh, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to get started building a Pear Deck lesson in Google Slides. We're also going to talk about how to use Pear Deck to facilitate both synchronous and asynchronous lessons. And that's going to work no matter whether you are in your physical classrooms uh, or whether you're doing distance learning in your virtual classrooms. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the most fun part of the session is that I'm actually going to present a Pear Deck and I'm going to have you all join as students if you would like so that we can take a look at both the student view and the teacher view. If you're new to Pear Deck, you've never seen it before, you've never interacted with it before, experiencing Pear Deck as a student is probably the best way to get most comfortable with how that's going to look from your student's perspective and how they're going to engage with the lessons that you're going to be presenting to them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. You will notice that I am here in Google Slides. Pear Deck is seamlessly integrated with the entire G Suite of tools, but especially with Google Slides. Uh, there's no need for you to learn a new platform or build your content in a separate platform. Everything that you build with Pear Deck is going to be built as a Google Slides file. Uh, consequently, everything that you build as a Slides file is also going to live right in your Google Drive. So seamlessly integrated with the tools that you already know how to use, uh, Pear Deck just allows you to layer in interactivity and engagement to your sessions. And we live as an add-on in Google Slides. So if you don't already have the Pear Deck add-on for Google Slides here, you can just go to get add-ons here. Uh, shameless plug, we're the number two most downloaded Google Slides add-on in the entire world. So when you pull up the G Suite Marketplace, we're going to be right there, easy for you to find and install. Once you have the add-on installed, though, you can open up your Pear Deck add-on here. And the add-on is where all of that interactivity lives that you can layer into your slide deck. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. So if you're new to Pear Deck, we've got a template library uh, that's built out specifically for you. Uh, these are custom interactive slides. We've already built them. We've already done the work. You can just uh, drop these right into your slide deck. They're ready to teach. And I'll come back to these here in just a second. But in addition to those pre-made interactive slides that we have, you can also use our custom tools here to take any existing slide that you have or any new slide that you're creating uh, and layer in custom interactivity. So for example, you can ask your students for a text response. You can give them a multiple choice question. You have drawing and draggable tools at your disposal here. You can ask for a number response or 
you can have your students browse a website and interact with a website right from within the Pear Deck slide. So if you want your students to watch a YouTube video or you want to embed a Flipgrid or an Edpuzzle or whatever it may be, you can use this web tool here to make any site interactive for your students without jumping them to a brand new tab or a brand new window. And the last little bit of interactivity that you can layer in from the add-on is now the ability to add audio to any specific slide in your slide deck. Add audio was by far and away the number one most requested feature by teachers back in March and April when distance learning became a thing, uh, especially for asynchronous learning. So teachers wanted the ability to layer in voiceover instruction to any slide. Uh, and so now we are gonna give you the ability to do that. So let's just take a quick look at what it looks like uh, to layer in some interactivity to your deck, the few different ways that we can do that. Uh, we've got templates that are built out here for specific time periods of your lesson. So we've got bell ringers for the beginning of class or at exit tickets for the end of your lesson. We've got templates built around critical thinking and social emotional learning. These SEL templates are super popular right now as we do our best to stay emotionally engaged and connected to our students uh, when we can't be in the same physical classrooms as them. And then even though Pear Deck is not subject area specific and we're not grade level specific, we do have some templates built out for specific subject areas. So whether you're a language arts teacher, a world languages teacher, social studies, science, math, uh, if you're a K through two teacher and you do a little bit of everything, we've got some templates built out here uh, specifically for our littles. So let me just show you what this looks like. I always like to start off with just a quick bell ringer. This is one of my favorites here. This is a text response slide, which is what do you wonder about today's topic? All you need to do to insert any of these templates into your slide deck is click them once. And the best part about these templates is that even though we've already done the work for you, even though we've already layered in the custom images and the text and the interactivity, you can edit these and adapt them however you like. So if you want to change this image or you want to change this text, you can absolutely do that. So instead of you ask, asking you, what do you wonder about today's topic? I could ask you, what do you all already know about Paradigm? So just change up that bell ringer a little bit. Again, for any of these templates that we've created, you can edit those and adapt them to your instruction for that specific day, however you like. So let's just do one more template here really quickly. Let's do an exit ticket. So at the end of class, I'm gonna ask you in one minute to write the most important thing that you took away from today's lesson. So I can drop this template in here. As with any standard Google slide, you can move that in your slide deck wherever you need it to be. So I'm just gonna take that slide, that template, and drag it all the way down here to the end of my lesson. So it's really easy to get started with templates. If you're new to Pear Deck, it's probably the best way to get most comfortable with the different types of interactivity that you can layer into your slides. Uh, so I encourage you to start here, browse these template packs, find templates that work for you, and then if needed, edit them and adapt them however you like. I also wanna show you how to layer in custom interactivity to any of your slides in your slide deck. So for example, I'm just gonna pretend I'm a music teacher here for a minute, uh, and I'm gonna want you as my student to draw me a treble clef. But you'll notice that this slide is totally static. All I've done is layered in an image of a staff and a little bit of text. There's nothing that my students could do with this right now. But all I need to do to make this a Pear Deck drawing slide, to make this a canvas that my students can annotate right on top of no matter what device they're using, is just come over here into my Pear Deck add-on. I can click my draw tool. We'll do our work on the back end. And within just a matter of seconds, we are gonna layer in that custom interactivity. So now when you present your lesson with Pear Deck, uh, as opposed to just being a static slide here, now your students can annotate right on top of this slide. And you can do that with any of these custom interactive tools that you have over here in your Pear Deck add-on. And lastly, let's show you how to add audio to your slides. Again, this is great for asynchronous remote learning. Uh, if you're gonna be doing any of that this year, when you click add audio to slide, we're gonna give you two options. You can either upload any existing audio file that you have saved on your computer, or you can record yourself right from within Pear Deck. 
So I don't have anything existing that lives in my computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and record myself really quickly. Hey students, this is Chris. I'm gonna flip this session from synchronous to asynchronous and let you work through these next few slides at your own pace. And in Pear Deck world, we call this student pace mode. When I notice that everybody's finishing up, I'll pull us back together and we can review our responses. Okay, so super easy to record yourself right from within Pear Deck. Once you have that how you like it, you can save the file and add your audio to your slide. When you do that, we're gonna drop a little notification into the top right-hand corner of the screen to let you and your students know that audio is included. When I present this lesson, there will be a little headphones icon that pops up in your students' view, and they can click that icon to pull up that audio file and have that played back loud for them. So that's a quick look at how you can layer in interactivity to any of your existing slide decks or brand new slide decks that you're building using either our templates, our pre-made slides, layering in custom interactivity tools here, or adding audio to any slide in your slide deck. So I think I've got everything ready to go. I have the deck how I like it. I've done what I need to do. So I'm ready to start my lesson as a teacher. And the way that we do that is by using this big green start lesson button right here. Don't present using the present button from Google Slides. If you do that, it's not gonna retain any of the interactivity that you've layered into your deck. So always, 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 this big green start lesson button right here from within Pear Deck. So when I click that, as a teacher, we're gonna give you two options. You can either launch a live synchronous session and instructor paced activity. So whether you're in your physical classrooms or whether you're incorporating some sort of video conferencing platform like Google Meet, uh, you can launch an instructor paced activity here. Or you also now have the ability to launch a session directly into student pace mode. So if you're teaching asynchronously or perhaps you had a student who missed class and you want to give them the lesson to work through, you can launch a session directly into student pace mode. When you do this, we're gonna give you a unique session link that you can push out to your students however you need to. As soon as they click that link, they're gonna be dropped right into that interactive deck. But for right now, since we are modeling a live session, I'm gonna launch an instructor paced activity, but we'll talk a little bit more about student paced mode within the session. So for those of you who would like to play along, who would like to join my Pear Deck as a student and participate, uh, we might have jumped you into full screen mode, I'm not sure, uh, but you can exit out of full screen mode. And if you wouldn't mind opening up a new browser window for me here, uh, you can kind of split your screen to have these two views open at the same time so that you can follow along with my presentation and join my presentation here as a student. That website for you to join is joinpd.com. That website never changes. It's always joinpd.com for a live synchronous session with your students. Here's our join screen that's coming through. You'll have to forgive me in my internet bandwidth is running a little slow this morning. But here's my join screen as a teacher that I'm projecting back to my students. Again, it's joinpd.com, whether that's in a separate window or if you've got a cell phone or a tablet handy, you're welcome to open up a web browser in that device and go to joinpd.com and enter our five digit join code, which today is C-O-T-P-F or confused olives turn purple flashlights. Once you enter that join code, you're gonna be automatically connected to our deck. It's Saturday here, so I'm feeling pretty good. As a teacher, I can see my students connect to my session in real time, so I know exactly how many students I have connected. If you're a Google Classroom user, you can invite your unique class roster to your session here. If you wanna skip this join screen altogether and just give your students a custom link to be dropped into your session, you can click this Give Students a Link button. It's gonna automatically copy that session link and then you can push that out to your students however you need to. I'm not sure how many folks we have here in the session, but it looks like we've got about 28 who are connected so far. And I do wanna keep us on track for time, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my class. But don't worry, if you didn't get in, 
that join code is always projected right up here in the top right hand corner of your projector view as a teacher. Today it is COTPF. And as always, it is joinpd.com for your students to get into your session. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna do as a teacher before I begin my class is I am going to launch my teacher dashboard. And your teacher dashboard uh, is a private window. Uh, it is a private view into your classroom that is just for your eyes only as a teacher. It allows you to control the flow of the lesson and review responses from your students in real time with their names attached. And you can choose to open that dashboard in a brand new window, or you can open the dashboard in a new device. So I've got a second monitor handy so that I can keep this hidden from my students. So I'm gonna open it over here in my second monitor, but that dashboard can be opened on a new device if you have a cell phone or a tablet handy. We're gonna give you some instructions here for how to do that. Essentially, you use this link, we'll prompt you to log in with your Google account, and then you'll be dropped right into that dashboard for your session on that secondary device. So again, we'll talk a little bit more about the dashboard here in just a couple of minutes, uh, but that dashboard can be opened in a brand new window, or it can be opened on a brand new device. But let's go ahead, move through our lesson here, give my dashboard just a second to load and drop you right into the interactive portion of today's lesson and ask you, what do you wonder about Paradox? Or what, sorry, what do you already know about Paradox? As a teacher, I can project these responses back to my classroom in real time. Always fun to see these text responses come in down to the keystroke. As a student, you'll notice that there's no enter or submit button that you need to hit. Everything that you do is automatically logged and automatically recorded in Pear Deck. Uh, and for students, students should know that uh, these responses when they are projected back to the classroom are always anonymous, okay? So in your dashboard, you have access to those responses as a teacher, but when you choose to show them back to your class, those responses are always projected anonymously. Pear Deck is a safe space for your students to answer openly and honestly uh, without the fear of their names being attached or being singled out in front of their classmates for those responses. Again, we are trying to encourage 100% student engagement in your classrooms. And it looks like uh, we're, we're kind of running the entire gambit here of experience. Some folks already know and love it, saying it's awesome, and some of us don't know anything about Pear Deck yet, and that's fine too. But let's just do a quick check. Maybe you already answered this uh, in the chat box, but I don't have my eyes there, so I couldn't see it. Uh, so just give me an idea of where everybody's coming from today, and this is always fun to take a look at. All right, this is great. So it looks like we've got a lot of folks from the United States today. We've got some folks up in Canada, Africa, Asia, Europe, South America, basically every continent besides Australia represented as of right now. Maybe somebody from Australia will pop in here halfway through the session. But that's great. It's awesome to have folks from all over the world joining our Pear Deck. That's one of the powers of Pear Deck is anybody can join from anywhere. Uh, but uh, this is a really great visual, uh, great visual for me, uh, reference for, for me to have here. Okay, so since we're not all coming from the same place, I expect that this answer may look a little bit different for some of us, but what do you expect your classrooms to look like to start this fall? Are you gonna be fully in person? Are you gonna be fully remote? Or are you starting off with some sort of hybrid model? Okay, this is an example of a Pear Deck multiple choice slide. As expected, we've got some different responses here. We got a few folks who are starting fully in person, 
uh, more of us who are starting remote, uh, and then we've got some folks who are doing a hybrid model. And I know that that hybrid model uh, is really popular in the United States right now to start the school year. And the reason I asked this question is because no matter what your classroom looks like to start the year, Pear Deck is going to work for you. So for those of you who know Pear Deck, who love Pear Deck, and who have used it before, this should look pretty familiar because this is what Pear Deck has looked like for the last five years. Pear Deck was designed as a tool to be used in our physical classrooms. And this is a look at all three, three views that we've got here. Our projector view, which is up in front of the classroom that is always synced to our students' devices so that we are always uh, in the same place at the same time. As a teacher, I can project my students' responses anonymously up in front of the class. And then here in our physical classrooms on a separate device, we have our teacher dashboard open. This dashboard on a second device allows you to be mobile throughout the classroom while still controlling the flow of the lesson and reviewing your students' responses in real time. Now in a virtual classroom, it looks a little bit different, but the concept is essentially the same. So hopefully this is what you all are looking at right now. I'll take my screen down here just a little bit to kind of model that. But we've got, uh, as a student, you've got our, our teacher's projector view here, my shared screen as a teacher, and then in a separate window, my student window where I can respond to those prompts in real time. As a teacher, I am sharing my screen, my projector view here, and then either on a secondary device or in my case, because I have a second monitor, that teacher dashboard, that private window into your classroom. So what devices are your learners gonna have access to this year? This is a Pear Deck drawing slide. So give me a dot, a check mark, a smiley face, a pink cloud, a heart, whatever it is that you want to give me within reason. <laughs> Okay, just gonna lock your screens really quickly, lock your answers in as a teacher. Uh, and it looks like we're covering basically the entire spectrum of devices here, which is not unexpected. And the good news is that Pear Deck is gonna work for your students no matter what hardware they have access to. So whether that's a cellular device or a Chromebook or a MacBook or whatever it may be, desktop, laptop, or a tablet, all your students need to join your Pear Deck session is a working web browser. Your students don't need to download anything. They don't need to install anything. All they're doing is going to joinpd.com every time in their web browser to access your Pear Deck session. Okay, slightly more serious note here. This is one of our agree, disagree templates that you can find in our templates pack. But do you agree or disagree that every student deserves a voice? It looks like we are all on the same page, which is great. We agree that every student deserves a voice. Uh, but you'll remember at the beginning of the class, I showed you that you can take those templates and you can edit them and adapt however you like. So I can take that same agree, disagree template and just ask you the question a little differently. Maybe this is a gut check for some of you. But is every student in your classroom heard right now? Not does every student deserve a voice. Do you agree or disagree that every student is heard? Okay, and this looks a little bit different. So we've got some conflicting responses here. So we've got some folks who agree that every student in their classroom is heard. That's amazing. Hopefully you are either already using Pear Deck or uh, you can start using Pear Deck and we can help continue that success that you're already having. We've got some folks who just disagree pretty strongly that not every student in their class is heard. And some who are right here in the middle who maybe don't know for sure 
maybe you haven't had a tool like Pear Deck up until now that allows you to, to assess in real time whether your students are engaging with your lesson. And fortunately, that's exactly why we built Pear Deck. So Pear Deck was built to give every single student a voice and every teacher deeper insight into their learning. We want you to be able to engage every kid in your class, not just the same three to four uh, who might feel comfortable raising their hands uh, and responding or asking questions. We want you to be able to engage even the shyest students in your class. And as a teacher, we are gonna give you that real-time data and real-time insight into your students' learning. Uh, and for those of you who have used Pear Deck before, you know that we do that via the teacher dashboard. For those of you who are new to Pear Deck, Let's pull that to the front here to show you what that looks like. So you remember this was hidden off on my second monitor because again, this dashboard is for your eyes only as a teacher. This is not for your students to see. The dashboard looks pretty similar to the projector view in that you can control the flow of the lesson here, slide by slide, or you can skip around to any slide that you like. The primary difference with the dashboard is that those responses in your dashboard always include your student names attached. So here we have our responses in our dashboard with student names attached so that in real time, you always know exactly who those responses are coming from. And as you can probably guess, down here all the way at the bottom, we are gonna see exactly who has not responded. So we've got, we, we scared Anne into to responding here in real time, no worries. My name's right here too, so don't feel too bad if you haven't responded yet. Uh, but your superpower as a teacher is always understanding exactly what's going on in your classroom and where those responses are coming from and who is engaging with your lesson. You also have full control over exactly what your classroom sees. So you can choose to show every response if you like here using the show response tool. So if we do that, we've got all responses that show up on our projector view, but I think it's always best practice to review those responses in your teacher dashboard before you project them back to your class. And then you have the ability to highlight individual responses here and show those. So when you star responses and project those, those will be the only three that are shown back in front of class. And conversely, maybe for those of you who are high school or middle school teachers, from time to time, you may get a response that's inappropriate from your class, uh, unfortunately, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, but you also have the ability to hide individual responses. So let's say, for example, this one here was inappropriate or might be a distraction. It's not, uh, I'm just uh, using you for the sake of argument here. Uh, but I can choose to hide any individual response here in my dashboard. And when I do that, that response will drop off the dashboard. So full control here in your dashboard of exactly what your class sees. Aubin will go ahead and bring it back here so you don't feel left out. The other brand new feature that I want to show you uh, within your teacher dashboard is our new teacher feedback tool. Uh, that's this little button that lives right between the star response and the hide response function here. So you now, as the teacher, have the ability to leave instant, timely, specific feedback for any of your students for any response in their slide deck. So let me just show you what that looks like here really quickly. I'm going to pull up my student view where I joined as a student a little bit earlier, make my windows a little bit bigger here. So I could say as a student, I know that Pear Deck is easy to use. Of course, in my dashboard as a teacher, I see that response come in in real time from Chris. And if I wanna leave Chris some specific feedback on that response, I can do so here using my leave feedback tool. You can give your students praise, you can ask them to expand further on their answer or how they got there. However you wanna leave this teacher feedback tool, you can use it. I just wanna show you quickly what this looks like. So I'm gonna keep this pretty simple and just say I agree for right now. If you blink, you're gonna miss it. So keep your eyes down here on my student screen, but I'm gonna send this feedback as a teacher. As a student, I get instant notification that I have feedback on the response that I have given. I can pull up that feedback here, mark it as read for myself, 
And then if I need to, as a student, I can take that feedback that I've received, I can adjust the answer that I've given originally, or I can add a new response here. So with teacher feedback, you have the ability to leave instant, uh, specific, timely feedback for any student in your class uh, on any response that they've given on any slide using this leave feedback tool here. Now I've already modeled the lock screen function a couple of times. Uh, as a teacher, this is another great classroom management tool. You can lock your student screens at any time so that they're no longer able to edit the response they've given or add a new response. With that lock screen function, you can also set a timer for your students. So if you wanna give them 30 minutes to respond to a 30 minutes, 30 seconds, a minute, or three minutes to respond to any of your prompts, you can do so here by holding down on that lock screen function. Uh, but perhaps one of my uh, favorite parts of Pear Deck in the dashboard here is the ability to add a new prompt on the fly. So if you wanted your class to expand further on the answers that they gave you, or if you're like me and you like to do just a quick temperature check to see how things are going and whether or not we are ready to move forward in the lesson as a class, you can drop in any of these templates at any time on the fly. And now your students can give me as a teacher the idea, some feedback, some real time feedback on how things are going uh, and whether or not as a class we are ready to move forward in our lesson. Again, these responses are always projected anonymously. So even if you have somebody who's not feeling so hot about how things are going, they can give you that honest feedback without the fear of being singled out or called out in front of the rest of their classmates. It looks like for the most part, things seem to be going pretty well. We're feeling pretty good about how the lesson's going, which is great. That gives me license uh, to go ahead and move forward in the lesson. And one of my favorite new tools to talk about uh, is our integration with Immersive Reader. For those of you who are not familiar with Immersive Reader, uh, it's a tool that was originally designed as a text decoding solution for students with learning differences like dyslexia, but it's grown into something bigger than that uh, and allows for text translation, which helps uh, at least here in the United States with our English language learners or our readers of any other language. Now, what Immersive Reader is, is a tool that breaks out all of the text that I as a teacher have entered onto any specific slide here in Google Slides. Uh, but the function is actually a student function. So I'm just gonna pull my student view to the forefront here. You all should be able to see this in your student views as well. But if you click this little immersive reader icon on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, it's gonna break out all of the text that my teacher has entered onto that slide. And then as a student, I'm gonna have a couple of different options that I can do with that text. So if I need to have that text played aloud for me here, I can do so. Pear Deck Plus Immersive Reader can also help students with learning differences. If students need to have that voice slowed down or sped up, they can change the voice speed. They can change the selection from female to male or male to female. They have text preferences that they can adjust to. So if they wanna make that text larger or smaller or increase or decrease the spacing between lines, they can do that. They can change the font or if want to, they can change the background color. Students can also highlight different parts of speech using Immersive Reader. So they can break the text out by syllables or they can highlight nouns or verbs, adjectives or adverbs. But perhaps my favorite part of Immersive Reader is the ability for students to translate this text into whatever language they're most comfortable learning in. So students can select any language here from our drop down menu. There's a ton to choose from. I'll stick with Spanish for right now. But students can translate individual words by clicking on that word. Pull up that translation here. If they click on a word like pair, for example, we have a picture dictionary that's built in with Immersive Reader. And if students wanna translate the entirety of that text, they can select document. It'll break out all the text into the language that they've selected here. And then if they need to, they can have that played aloud for them in that language. Perdeck Immersive Reader también puede ayudar a los estudiantes con las diferencias de aprendizaje. 
Now, that's a lot of text, so I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, but hopefully that gives you a, a quick idea of what your students can do in their student view with Immersive Reader. So we're really excited about that. I think we released that back in February, maybe, uh, and just really a great, a ton of great feedback on how that's helped uh, in world language classrooms uh, or our, our learners of other languages. So let's move forward and talk a little bit about student paste mode. Now you'll remember at the very beginning of class, I added some audio to this particular slide. So if I move back to my student view here, my student window, here's the little headphones icon that you can click as a student to pull up that audio file and have that played back aloud. Hey students, this is Chris. I'm gonna flip this session from synchronous to asynchronous and let you work through these next few slides at your own pace. And in Pear Deck world, we call this student pace mode. When I notice that everybody's finishing up, I'll pull us back together and we can review our responses. So that's how snappy the little uh, record feature within Pear Deck works for any of your lessons. In regards to student pace mode, you'll remember there's two ways to do this. So you can either launch a session directly into student pace mode at the very beginning and give your students a unique session link to access that Pear Deck, or you can flip your class at any time and turn on student pace mode here. Fun things always live behind three little dots. You can turn on student pace mode either from your projector view or from your teacher dashboard. When you do that, we're gonna give you a notification that says your session is now in student pace mode and as a student, if I flip over to my student screen here, you should see these little arrow icons, which will allow you to click through these next few slides and work through at your own pace. As a student, you are now in full control of the flow of the session. So uh, I see we're at uh, 11.38 a.m. Central Standard Time here in the United States. So why don't I give us about uh, three or four minutes to work through these next few slides. Uh, and then again, once I see everybody finishing up, I'll pull us back together and we can review those responses as a class. So let's take about the next four minutes, work through these slides in student pace mode and we'll come back together.
Okay, everybody. Uh, so one of the things that I want to highlight for you all uh, right now is that even when a session is in student pace mode, whether you've launched the session directly into student pace mode here, or whether you flipped your class from synchronous to asynchronous, here in your teacher dashboard, again, that private window that's just for you, in your dashboard, you can see exactly where everybody is at in real time. So as a teacher, I know that I've got four students uh, who are working on our hemisphere slide. I've got six who are trying to graph X plus one for me right now. Uh, when you click on this slide, it's gonna let you know exactly who is on that particular slide in your class and those responses that have already come in from your class. So important to know for you that uh, even if a session is in student pace mode, uh, even if your students are in control of the flow, here in your dashboard, you always know exactly what's going on in real time. So I do want to keep us on track for time. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off student pace mode here. At any time as a teacher, I can come in and shut off student pace mode. When I do that, your screens are going to be mirrored to my screen once again. So your student view and my teacher view are in sync. As the teacher, I am back in full control of the lesson and we can move forward and we can take a look and see how everybody did. All right, and it looks like uh, we passed with flying colors. Doesn't seem like we had anybody who had donuts on their mind this morning, which is an improvement from, from the usual. Uh, so great, great work. It looks like we got a firm grasp of our bees. This is a Pear Deck for Littles template slide that you can find right in your templates pack. Let's move forward. Questions are gonna get a little harder. Okay, and it looks like we did pretty well. Not as well as our bees, but kudos to those of you who've got our question correct here. We got someone maybe who thinks uh, over here the moon is experiencing winter. I don't actually know if the moon experiences winter or not. But don't worry, we're not grading you too harshly. Okay, this is the one that I'm always really interested in to see these responses come in. Uh, I do like to highlight this particular slide. You'll remember that this slide is the one where we, we layered in that custom drawing interactivity at the beginning of class. This slide also helps to highlight the idea that Pear Deck is not subject area or grade level specific. So we're not just for math, we're not just for science. Anybody who's looking to incorporate formative assessment and get more engagement from their students can use Pear Deck in their classrooms. So let's just, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and give gold stars, uh, just a couple here to Dana and Irene for their, and Dana for hers and Irene for her honesty. So kudos to you, Irene. Okay, let's see if we got any math teachers in here. Courtney's already being honest and saying absolutely no math, which is admirable. Uh, let's see, Aubin, great work here. Let's see if we got anybody else. Shannon, Shannon, I appreciate your honesty as well. Oof, that's exactly how I would have responded. Okay, last one here. Let's take a look and see how we did as a class with our nouns. And it looks like, as with our Bs, we have a pretty firm grasp in our classroom of our nouns. So great work, everybody. Now, hopefully you had a chance to make it to our website slide here, our templates page. This is an example of a Pear Deck web slide. Uh, so I have entered in a URL. You as a student should be able to browse this site right from within your student view in Pear Deck and interact uh, without being jumped to a brand new tab or a brand new window. Uh, in terms of this page, I, I highly encourage you to check out our templates page. 
Not every single template pack that we've created lives in the Pear Deck add-on, uh, but you can find more unique templates like talking about the environment here uh, on our templates page. You can copy those entire template packs right to your Google Drive so that those slides uh, are ready at your fingertips anytime you want to insert them into your deck. So that was a lot of information to take in in about 45 minutes. And uh, we certainly understand that getting started with a new tool, especially right now as we're trying to incorporate new tools into remote learning or hybrid learning or whatever it may be, the craziness with back to school, we know that that can be a little overwhelming. But we've done our best um, to, to get you the resources that you need to help you get started. Uh, we designed Pear Deck to be an intuitive tool for teachers to use. I would encourage you to check out these help videos uh, if you'd like. It's gonna walk you step-by-step step with how to get started with Pear Deck, building your lesson in Google Slides, presenting it to your students, uh, and then asking, or I'm sorry, accessing that data post-session. For those of you who would like to join in another webinar, my team is running live free sessions every day of every week. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say every day, not Saturdays and Sundays, but Monday through Friday, we are running free training sessions. You can sign up on our training page that I've got linked here. Uh, these webinars run the range of Pear Deck 101. We have remote learning webinars with Pear Deck. Uh, and we've also got sessions that are dedicated uh, strictly to using Pear Deck with student pace mode, if you're gonna be teaching asynchronously. And we've got a ton of help articles. We've got a really extensive knowledge base that's built out. So if you have specific questions about any features we have like teacher feedback, or you wanna learn a little bit more about the pedagogy that went into developing this, uh, this tool or best practices for using a tool like teacher feedback, our knowledge base uh, has a ton of help articles uh, for about any question that you might have with using Pear Deck. So as we get wrapped up, uh, you'll remember this exit ticket that I dropped in at the very beginning of our lesson. So I would love in one minute to have you tell me the most important thing that you took away from today's lesson. And I am going to set that timer and give you exactly one minute to respond to my prompt here. So there's our timer. We'll give you one minute uh, to get your answers in. About 10 seconds, 10 seconds to get your responses in. Okay, so that timer is up. Uh, as a student, you'll notice that once that timer ends, your screens are locked and you're no longer able to respond or edit the response that you've given me. We can take a look at these responses as a class and see what folks had to say. Uh, we got some really great comments here on teacher feedback. Formative assessment is going to be easier with Pear Deck. Of course, the ability to gauge every student is exactly what we're after in our classrooms. Uh, that Amber has amazing hair. We concur. Some new features like add audio and teacher feedback. Those are two of the newest just released within the last five months or so. Okay, sometimes we, we forget to talk a little bit about that teacher dashboard, exactly how to, to incorporate that into our lessons. So yes, you'll remember the dashboard can be opened in a new window if you have a second monitor, or if you've got a cell phone or a tablet handy, you can open that dashboard on a new device. Immersive reader, 
immersive reader here. These are great. I always like to look through these. So for, bear with me for just a minute. Student pace mode. Fun and interactive. Yes, not your mama's PowerPoint, right? Like this is engaging and interactive and fun for your students. It's simple enough. That's great. And somebody I didn't give enough time, so I apologize for that. And takeaways, which haven't even been mentioned yet, but we'll get there in just a second. So this is really great. I, I think that your responses line up nicely with what I hoped it was you were gonna take away from this session, which is that Pear Deck is easy to use uh, for both teachers and students. We're taking a tool that you already know in Google Slides. We're allowing you to create everything in Slides. Everything lives in your drive. All you're doing is just taking Pear Deck and layering in interactivity to that slide deck that you were already presenting. Pear Deck is instructionally effective. So Pear Deck was built by teachers for teachers. So everything that we do has pedagogy at its heart. We're never gonna build fluff into Pear Deck that we don't think is instructionally effective. And Pear Deck helps keep you connected. So whether you're teaching synchronously or asynchronously, virtually or in your physical classrooms, Pear Deck is gonna help keep you connected and engaged with your students. And if you have some time, I would highly encourage you to check out our efficacy page that I have linked here on this particular slide. This talks about the learning science that supports Pear Deck, the instructional values that make us appropriate for all classrooms, regardless of grade or subject, and then the learning outcomes that schools and districts actually tell us that Pear Deck helps them achieve. So please, if you have a chance, do check out that efficacy page. Uh, it really emphasizes and highlights the why of Pear Deck, which to us is every bit as important as how the tool actually works. So if somebody mentioned student takeaways, and that's what we're getting to right now, I'm gonna go ahead and manually end this Pear Deck session here. I can give it a title. So what's today? The days blend together anymore. So I'm gonna say 822 distance learning with Pear Deck and GEG. Once I title the session, it's gonna automatically check this publish student takeaways box for those of you who don't know what student takeaways are, every one of you is gonna get one here who participated in my Pear Deck lesson. It is a copy of this slide deck with your individual student responses included, published to a Google Doc that gets emailed right to your inboxes. So within just a matter of minutes of finishing the session, every single one of you is gonna get your own copy of this lesson with your individual responses included, and that allows you to review the session after class uh, you can make notes, ask questions, mark up your documents as needed, uh, and you as the student and I as the teacher retain co-ownership of that uh, because it is a Google Doc. So I'm going to go ahead and save and end this session. It's going to find those takeaways and publish those. Once it does that, we're just going to be dropped right back into Google Slides, which is where we started in the first place. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. You're very welcome. I know that um, you have a lot of people in the chat that are saying, this is amazing. I'm so excited about this. And so I'm, I think there's a lot of people that if they didn't know it, they're going to be using it. <laughs> and um, also they were wondering if it is the premium version that you were going through or the free version, but it is the premium version, correct? That's correct. A lot of the features that we highlighted today, especially the teacher dashboard, immersive reader, add audio, teacher feedback, those are tools that are part of the Pear Deck premium version. Right. And right now you are running a little more extended with the teacher uh, free version, right? The free trial? That's correct. So anybody who's signing up right now is going to get 90 days of Pear Deck premium access for free. So we encourage you to try it out. Pear Deck's not just a tool for virtual learning. It's not just a tool for in-class instruction. So no matter what your classroom ends up looking like this year, uh, Pear Deck's gonna, gonna really help you out. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, well, there's one last little announcement. I guess maybe it's not little, but uh, it's exciting stuff. So I'm going to pop on the screen here, my friend Tiffany. Tiffany is joining us as well. So, Hi, Chris. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> so everybody has seen over the summer.
summer that I was the GEG Colorado leader and I've been working building this community and um, I have an announcement. <laughs> I had Tiffany is going to be the brand new GEG Colorado leader. Yay! <laughs> um, because I am joining, I'm always terrible at this pointing, I'm joining Chris <laughs> at the Pear Deck team. I will Ooh. be the new I got mine on too. Uh oh, <laughs> awkward. I'm not wearing that. <laughs> so I will be the new instructional technology manager at Pear Deck, and I will be joining the Pear Deck team come Monday. So that's super exciting. I will be a Pear Deck member. Yay. And Tiffany will be taking care of all of you in GEG Colorado. So. But with your help, you're not abandoning us. We're not allowing yeah. that. So we do the very back end portion of it, but yes, I will be helping out when I can. Yep. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. We have an amazing time learning about Pear Deck and Tiffany. I know that things are going to be great coming up with GEG Colorado with you leading it. So. Thank you. I'm very excited to join. Yes. All right. Well, that's what we have for you today. And thank you again for joining us, Chris. And I'll see you on Monday. <laughs> Bye, guys.